Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Andrew Chicken, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be playing a bit of Vora, who is a character who I really do like, and I think she has a lot of potential, but also, she seems to be kind of, well... I don't know, I don't really want to say irrelevant, but it, she, uh, it seems like she's not particularly meta at the moment, and I want to kind of discuss why I think that is, and what potentially could be done to make Vor maybe feel a little bit better, especially in comparison to some other flanks that we have. Because I really don't think she's bad, right? I don't think if you pick Vora, you're, oh, you're automatically throwing, you're just, you're the worst, oh, you're so bad. But, I mean, she's certainly, like, she's not Androxus, she's not Seven, she's not Caspian, she's not any of these many flanks who can do significantly better, right? She's not Maeve, she's not any of these stupendous flanks. And, yeah, I kind of want to just, well, again, talk about why that potentially is. But before we do that, of course, let's take a look at where we are right now. We're in Frozen Guard, um, which, unfortunately, is just a really bad map. Not just, you know, to flank on, but in general, but especially to flank on, it's really, really bad. Um, enemy team has three flanks here, which is awfully surprising, considering the map. They've got Lex, Moji, and Buck, so... Yeah, not exactly these top-tier flanks that we are talking about, and so hopefully that'll give us a bit better of a chance. And on our team, we've got double support with Cassie and Mako. So, yeah, let's go ahead and grab a build. Um, honestly, considering it's this map, I probably should go on Yielding Pressure, but at the same time, I just really like Relentless Presence. If you guys know me, you know I like my mobility talents. So we're going to grab this with my typical Vian Spam build. We've got double cooldown reduction, and then we've got damage reduction, and I find it works pretty well. But yeah, Vora. Why is she just not played as much? She's a certainly, I would say, a very, very fun character, right? She has a unique gimmick where oh, you, hit, you hit shots, you build up stacks, and then your stacks augment your abilities, right? So yeah, your Dark Siphon will cripple if you get five stacks, and your Obliteration will do more damage if you get five stacks. And they also heal you whenever you expend them by using one of those abilities. So pretty cool gimmick. Three, and, yeah, it kind of just defines her whole game. Also, let's get some AP. Here we go. <clears throat> she does decent damage. She's got pretty good self-sustain. Obliterate obviously gives you invulnerability frames. She has decent mobility. And she has a cripple, which is something that is extremely rare. We have crowd control and flanks, like we have slows, for example. Yeah, let's cripple that buck, I guess. Oh, all right, let's try and dodge there. Charge! Yes, we got him. All right, good. But yeah, she's got a lot of, like, utility, sustain, generally just good stuff, right? She even has decent cards, right? We have a 20% DR card on our, uh, on our tendril, which is pretty darn solid. So all these make her seem like a pretty good character, right? And I would actually argue, I would actually argue, yeah, she is a pretty good character. But when you compare her to what other flanks can do, I think it's just an issue of redundancy where she's not a character who you would want to pick in lieu of these other flanks, and because these other flanks are stronger, it makes her feel kind of, you know, weaker in the meta, even though she's not necessarily a bad design at all. And I would argue she's very fun to play. Very good. So, yeah, let's just compare her to Seven, because I think that's a pretty apt comparison, right? Both of them have tendrils. Seven's tendril not only sends you farther, but well, well, well. Bonk, can we get him? I think we can get him. Yeah, we can get him. His tendril not only sends you farther, but also you can activate it from a longer distance. If I was if I was playing seven, I'd easily build a uh, to tendril like that, for example. But I cannot do that with Vora. And yeah, when we do this, it sends us a decent distance. But seven can go way, way farther, and also he can cycle that with his other mobility to have the best mobility in the game. Literally, no one can catch up to seven. But also, he has a better weapon. He has better range on the weapon, which Vora's range isn't even bad. Vora's range is actually pretty good for a flank, but he has better range, and it's a hit scan, and it's higher DPS. So just more everything. More mobility, more damage, more range. The only thing he really lacks is survivability, but Vora's not exactly the tankiest either. She has a she has a thousand health extra, and a little bit of self-sustain, and that's basically it. And the obliterate, I guess. Woo! Oh, delicious hook. And a delicious shield, but sadly we're gonna die here. Unfortunate. So yeah, I don't think anyone's really going to argue that Seven isn't particularly meta right now. He's absolutely busted. <laughs> I see him everywhere, and he's very, very strong. Androxus is another good example. He's got, well, very consistent damage. Very, very consistent damage. He's got reversal, which is nice. He's got very precise mobility. I'd say Vora could probably actually beat him in terms of mobility if she uses two tendrils and just, you know, wants to traverse. Like, if we're talking sheer traversal, she can probably go farther. But his is very precise and also better for dodging, I would say. And yeah, he's also a bit easier to get into. 
And then you got other characters, like, well, let's say Maeve. Maeve has better mobility than Laura. I think that's pretty much just a fact. <laughs> but she also has way better range than her as well. So it's just like, all these characters just do stuff slightly better than Laura. And I think that's kind of where the issue lies. She's not bad, it's just others are better. She's not a throw pick, right? She's not Sky, she's not Moji. But... Yeah, it's just, why would I ever pick this character? What needs other characters? Yes. Yeah. I guess Buck is another good example, although... Vora can certainly play much safer than Buck. When Buck is allowed to shine, he's way better than Vora. I mean, he's got really good dive potential, really good burst, and he matches her in sustain, right? He's got just a thousand health, he can pop at any time! Ow! Ah! <clears throat> yeah, uh, we are gonna be dying a lot this game, for sure. Four, three, yeah, two, honestly, one. I think you wouldn't really need to do that much to make Laura feel a lot better. One thing I would definitely like to see is I would really like to see, like, greater traversal distance on her tendril, right? Because she currently has actually the shortest tendril in the game, if you really get down and think about it. Seven. I mean, his grapple is just unmatched, right? <laughs> you have such a long distance from which you can activate it, and then it sends you a ridiculous amount. Uh, a ridiculous distance. It sends you flying. And you can spam it way greater than Vora's and, of course, Grover's. But then Grover, even though technically he might not have, like, at base, a greater range than Vora, yeah, he has Vine Tech, where he can literally travel halfway across the map in one Vine, just by doing a bit of a flick. So, Vora's actually kind of left in the dust in that aspect. And also, another thing I kind of forgot to mention when comparing with Seven, Vora can have two Tendrils as a talent, Whereas, Seven has two grapples Five, by default, four, and then he gets an additional three, bonus from his talent two, on top of that, whether it be one. extra damage with Tribunal Upgrades, or extra bombs with Spring Loaded, which does his extra damage, and also extra range on his dash, Wise which is just absurd. Said, so, yeah, I would really just like to see a bit more range on that. Like, what if she had activation range comparable to Seven, but also it sent her a little farther? I think that would feel really good, considering she doesn't have any other mobility to speak of, right? Apart from Obliterate, which isn't really a movement ability, if we're being totally honest. Like, it's a tiny little dash forward, and it's just, it's not a movement ability. It's, it's really not. But yet, the game treats it like a movement ability, because you can still cripple it. So what if you couldn't cripple Obliterate? What if it was like an ice block where you can just use it regardless? Hello! Oh. Yeah, what if you could just use it regardless of... Gosh, I'm getting distracted right now. <laughs> but you could use it regardless of whether you were crippled or not. Like, what if I was inside of a Void Grip and I could obliterate out of that? Uh, with Power Cosmic. Maybe that would be an interesting buff to Vora. I feel like you could do just, like, really small things to kind of make her feel good without really changing her all that much. Because I feel like her damage is okay. It's just like... Yeah, 7 exists, and yeah, why, why should I ever play 7? But also, you can make changes to other flanks to make Vora more appealing. Like, for example, nerfing 7's range, which is something I really think needs to happen. Right? And that's not something with Vora at all, but by nerfing 7 in that way, you would thus make Vora a little bit more appealing. Tiny bit, but more appealing nonetheless. Because 7's range is just ridiculous. He, he can act like a full-on sniper. If you saw my video the other day, he can literally play like he's burst mode Victor, but with the best mobility in the game. And arguably even better damage. <laughs> like, it, it's absolutely absurd. And if your aim is really good, or like if you're using aim assist on the controller, for example, he's nutty. And I don't think he should be able to do damage from as long of a range as he has, while also having the best mobility in the game. If you have the highest mobility in the game, you should have to get a little bit closer for your kills. I'm fine with him having a, an option to confirm kills at longer range, but like... Let's, uh, let's maybe not make him have greater range than Tyra, for example, who already actually has pretty good range, considering she has a rifle. Like, it, it's, it's just, it's done. But yeah, you can do changes like that to try and kind of bring her more into the meta, honestly. Mm. Now I'm dead. <laughs> Alright, let's try and actually focus on the match here. Hi, Khan. How are you? Take some damage. There is just a bunch of Garbo going on back here, so... I'm just going to spam some shots in here. We'll get up our darkness stacks. It is really nice that Vora has so much poke because it allows you to kind of play from a distance and then farm up your stacks. And then when you want to go in on target, you just tendril in and then realize there's a buff right there. And you need to obliterate so you don't die. <laughs> and then, yeah, you just go in on the target once you have the stacks. So it is a very nice play style. And I think... I don't know if that's necessarily the reason why she's not played as much, because people just can't figure that out or something, but 
Eh, I mean, it's fairly straightforward, I would think, actually. And, yeah, it is quite nice. But yeah, like, if I wanted to just sit back at range right now, why wouldn't I just pick A? Like, to be totally honest. Like, in this stretch of the map, for example, what reason do I have to pick more over Maze or Seven? Like, they would simply be doing more damage at range. <laughs> like, just straight up. Of course, again, on this map, this isn't really, like, a good demonstration of any flank strength, because it's a terrible flank map. Oh, please, sir. <laughs> but yeah, I guess... Yeah, it's like she has good range, but not quite the best. Not quite the worst either. It's just like she's very average. Very, very, very average. Which is all right, but yeah, it means... Eh, not played as much as she was in her heyday. I honestly still... I can't really... I, I don't really understand why she didn't get as many skins uh, back when she was more popular. Because there was a time when she was actually pretty meta, right? Mm -mm. I don't remember if she did, like, more damage or anything. Um, I certainly know her projectiles were bigger, which made it easier to hit her shots. But there was a time where she was more popular because the meta was more in her favor back then. And I have to wonder why they didn't capitalize on it. Because she seems like a character they would absolutely want to capitalize on. Right? <laughs> She's a woman who they can make sus skins for, which, you know, love it or hate it, that is a reason why they make skins. I mean, why do you think Ying has so many skins, or Saris or Maeve has so many skins? But also, you know, popular, uh, very fun to play. You know, it's not like she's Atlas, where she's super niche. So why does she only have, like, one good skin? And it was from her release. Like, she has the, uh, the Galactic Conqueror, right? The, the villain of the Star Sister franchise. Uh, she has that skin, and then she has Ruby Rose, which she got last summer, which honestly sucks, in my opinion. It doesn't look that good. The only good thing about it, honestly, is the sight. And maybe the grapple effect, too, because I think that's pretty cool. Like, where, where are the skins for her? Like, <laughs> low-key, she kind of deserves another skin, I would say. <laughs> which, yeah, is kind of weird. <laughs> like, why, why doesn't she have as many skins? I don't know, it's weird. It's all just weird. It, it feels like there's just... It feels like she's a really cool character who has a lot of potential, but they're just really not diving that deep into it. And it makes me sad, because I do like her. <clears throat> Honestly, I think she's probably my favorite character overall when it comes to just, like, default design. Like, if we're talking purely aesthetics here, I think she has probably one of the best, like, default skins in the game. If we're, yeah, if, if we're kind of, I guess, looking at that. <clears throat> and also, I like the aesthetic of, uh... Yeah, just being edgy, vining around with a scythe. I think it's all cool. It's all just a mystery, man. It's all just a mystery why they don't capitalize on her more. But, uh, yeah. I guess it's kind of digressing from how to make her meta. But yeah, it's not like we're doing bad right now either. Again, considering we're on sort of a bad map, we're doing okay. We're 18 and 6 right now. It's not like she can't do things. Absolutely not. So yeah, I guess it's just kind of a difficult topic at the end of the day. <laughs> do we buff her, actually? Do we not buff her? Do we just nerf other people? I don't think I have the answers at the end of the day. I kind of just wanted to make a video talking about Mora. I feel like it's honestly ended up a bit rambly, but sometimes you just gotta ramble, you know? Uh, it, it's kind of a frustrating period of time for me right now in terms of making videos for you guys, because... Uh, emoji! Oh, we got it. Okay. <laughs> Because, yeah, it's that time of year where we're waiting for the new update. We have, at this point, a week left until the update, right? It's coming out on the 23rd. And there's just nothing, really, for me to do. I can't make videos on PTS content because the PTS is down. And I've pretty much exhausted all my supplies from the streams I did. And Ranked is basically dead. And there's no Trials of the Realm. <laughs> like, there's no quests or anything to grind. There's no nothing. There's absolutely nothing. So I just gotta make random videos on... Random characters for a few days here. And then once the new update comes, I mean, oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun. Gonna hopefully make uh, some more, like, I guess beginner friendly guides, because at the start of the season, usually we get people coming in, and of course we did have a massive influx of new and returning players recently on Steam. Yeah, I'm probably in a bad position here. Yeah, I'm dead. So yeah, like, we can make new guides like that, like maybe an itemization guide, although honestly, itemization guides are so hard to make these days because they keep changing items, like, every patch, it seems. So, yeah, it's hard to keep that updated and consistent. But yeah, also I'll make a guide on, like, just the basics of how to play Payload, because I'm sure some people will be asking about that. Super, super short, simple guide. But then also, yeah, we'll be able to uh, get even more proper videos discussing, like, you know, the details of what's coming next patch, like, really diving into testing stuff, um, and that'll be super fun. And of course, I can't wait to stream more payload. I, I'm genuinely like, I feel like I'm having withdrawal. <laughs> Especially from the air control as well. The air control. Hello. The air control feels so good. 
it's like sometimes it's hard to really kind of get how good it feels just watching the videos um but it feels amazing to have just such snappier movements it feels like you're a lot more in control and hey that is one of the things next patch that's going to sort of you know unintentionally indirectly buff for them. More so than it will some other characters. It buffs seven more, sadly, which I think even more plays into the redundancy of this character. But yeah, increased air control with tendrils. Oh my gosh, it feels amazing. <laughs> I did play one game, but I didn't publish it on YouTube. But uh, yeah, it feels really good. So yeah, man, I can't wait to play with that. Like, genuinely, that's such a good change. I didn't realize what we had until it was gone. Like, I don't even remember them removing it. Because that was a change that was made a long time ago when I paid less attention to the patches. But the fact that it's coming back now is just, it's so, so good. I must equip myself so yeah, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of amazing content. Like, we're going to be overflowing with good videos and good streams once the update comes. Right, once Season 6 is here. But, yeah, in the meantime, you get me rambling about Vora. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, <clears throat> and honestly, it's another hard thing to make videos right now. Because, like... Uh, I could make build showcases, I guess, but half the characters I can't make build showcases on because, like, they're getting changed next patch. Like, how am I going to make a Torvald build right now? I guess it probably won't be changed too much next patch, but, like, you know, what about characters that are getting changed more? Like, how can I ever make a Furia video right now? Well, that's not going to work. Um, and then the characters who I have left, I kind of just don't really feel like covering. Like... Mm. Honestly, my thought process for today's video was just like, oh, what if I make... Uh, okay, I can make maybe a Leon video and talk about, like, hey, is she good? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then I just saw Vora and I was like, okay, I'm, gonna do, I'm doing that instead because Vora's just interesting. Like, other than that, like, I don't know, do I make an intro video? Honestly, I don't even know how I feel about my intro builds. Sometimes I feel like they're good, sometimes I feel like they're bad. I don't know. I feel like... Maybe my Andrew builds probably aren't as good as they should be, so I'm not making a video on those. Um, and there's there's just, a, there's just a bunch of characters that are boring to me. Like, I know I could probably cover certain characters on the, on the channel, but I haven't covered in a while. Like, I can make a Lex video for the Lex enthusiast. It's just kind of boring. Laura's more fun to me. So, yeah. <clears throat> We shall play Vora instead, and it shall be fun, I guess. We are almost about to win this game here. I'm gonna just wrap back. I need healing. Saris has got my back. And that is GG. So, there we go. Nice 3-3, three three, pretty even game here of Vora. And yeah, I guess in a nutshell, to clarify the rambling, Vora's kind of redundant in comparison to the likes of Seven, Androxus, Maeve, etc. She's not bad. Certainly not. She can hold her own, especially against a lot of damage characters. Like, if I'm playing Vora up against, like, I don't know, Victor, Tyra, um, heck, maybe even Leon, if I get the jump on her, like, I can do okay. But why would I play Vora when the other better options exist? I think is kind of what boils down to Vora not being as popular at the moment. And some small tweaks to make her feel better could include increasing the range on her tendril, not just in terms of how far away you can activate it, but also in terms of how far it sends you. And then also, hey, what if Obliterate wasn't able to be crippled? Because it's kind of just like a, an ice block, but less invulnerability and more damage? I don't know. I don't really see why that is classified as a movement ability. It doesn't really send you anywhere. It's kind of weird. Um, and yeah, looking at the stats here, I mean, we were still able to do very, very good that game. Actually, we did do worse than the buck in terms of actually getting kills, but we were able to play a lot safer and ultimately get the second lowest. Actually, no, not the second lowest stats in the lobby, because Ray and Khan barely died. But yeah, we got the second lowest deaths on the team, and we got 109,000 damage there, pretty much tying Lex for top damage, so we were able to do some good stuff there, and overall, I really like Vora, and I really think she has a good kit, a very, very well-designed kit, flows well together, interesting gimmicks, good utility, unique, it's all very nice, it's just, at the end of the day, Seven's more effective, <laughs> so we play him instead of Vora. But uh, yeah, really, really nice character. Maybe give her a new skin. And that's about going to wrap it up for today's video. So if you guys have enjoyed it, of course, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload from me. Also, make, a ch uh, make sure to check out the Twitch channel and the Discord server, both of which are linked in the description down below. And yeah, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out. Okay.